Tsubasa Yamaguchi's Blue Period is probably one of the best mangas ever put out of the manga publishing industry. It captures something that most manga and other media alike try to capture and often fail, and that is relatable authenticity. From the high budget glamorous tragedies of Hollywood to the quaint rawness of a student film, the race for authenticity is prominent. This is a result of the way we measure success of a piece of media, art, or even a person. The metric for success today is to convince the largest audience of people that they can confine their emotions in the story, the characters, or the content you put out. Be it fear, laughter, love, or hate. But inevitably, when the metric for success is so visible, people will try to game the system. This is obvious in the one-note self-insert isekais of new anime and even some of the highest budget shows in the West. But more often than not, it doesn't work. After all, if you manufacture authenticity, it loses its substance. Despite all this, and the entertainment industry being saturated more chaotically than a Jackson Pollock, there are some stories that pop up out of the woodwork and still manage to carry with them the most important thing a story should carry. A soul. This is Blue Period, a manga that has an overflowing soul. It may seem like the unassuming life of a high schooler who makes rash decisions to pursue his passion sporadically, but Blue Period has some of the most relatable characters put to page in modern manga. Blue Period follows the life of a diligent delinquent, Yato Rayaguchi, who breezes past life making other people happy. It's a people pleaser who does things for the sake of normality, or who's overthought about the future to the point of logically eliminating every part that could possibly rear him of course his perfect life. This in part is where the story comes from. The author Tsubasa Yamaguchi is also a graduate art student and while the story at times feels autobiographical, the most impressive thing about Blue Period is the amount of space it leaves for us the readers and the watchers to walk along with the Atora. It's companionship disguised as relatability. And what could be more authentic than a hardworking friend? Blue Period has its techniques and impressiveness analyzed from every angle possible here on YouTube. A manga so authentic it could be mistaken for a video essayist's wet dream. But I am not a video essayist, so I'll be coming at this video from the perspective of an artist. Here in the warm and fuzzy art community, the word we throw around like an Oxford graduate throws around semicolons is the word talent. No one wants to have someone use it on you, but upon seeing the glorious art of someone you admire, it slips up. Oh my god, the talent. If you ever want to know who the artist of a piece of displayed art is, wait for an unassuming art critic to walk up to the image and comment on the raw talent of the piece. And look around the room, the person who's shaking the hardest in a fit in the back, that is the artist. Talent is a beautiful insult, a sword that cuts right through the cool demeanor of any artist because it claws its way in with a genuine compliment and kills you with its simpleness. Art is not a talent, at least not for us artists. Talent is the concept that grabbed my attention in the manga. Because unlike the cut and dry, Blue Period proves that cultivation beats aptitude. The real reason I wanted to make this video in the first place is this idea. A promise that art is a skill and not something you're born with. Yatara starts off knowing next to nothing about art. He doesn't even start with supplies. The first chapter itself had me hooked. Not because he's a badass or correct or because he's impressive. The only thing that was going for him was that he was vulnerable. 
and vulnerable enough to feel, compelling him out of the shell that he had cocooned himself in. More often than not, the characters in a manga will have an early realization, compelling them into a cold, cool, and utterly different person. But Yatora isn't like that. He isn't driven by magic or by an unfaltering sense of purpose. He isn't going to be the best, the strongest. He works hard because he's afraid of losing his chance, because his parents can't afford the alternative. And that is so often what motivates us, an immense fear of not being able to keep drawing, to keep doing what you like. Blue Period is, if nothing else, a montage of experience. A manga that teaches people not to be so harsh on others just because you don't understand the complexity of the craft they perform or the importance of the skill they've built. As I said earlier, Blue Period gets so much praise for being a story that emphasizes hard work that goes into making and cultivating a skill. But Blue Period's greatest gift to the world is the painstaking detail put into its purpose. Although this may have been unintentional, each chapter contributes to an overall struggle. A skill that more often brings misery than reward, pain than pleasure, and an overwhelming amount of fear, loneliness and isolation, illness and ache. Art is hard, but artists are hard working. That is the story. But the message is to the reader, not the readers who understand. An artist doesn't need to be told the pain of creating art. The period, while enjoyable in its relatability, is not a manga for artists. Those of us who understand Yatora and his struggles understand him all the way. We artists, no matter how skilled, beginners or otherwise, even the greatest artists in the world, live in a dome of translucent talent. Therefore, Blue Period isn't for us. It's for the rest of the world. Blue Period is special because it teaches its readers to respect art and artists alike, and to look past the illusion of talent and the cultivation of skill that it takes to put a character on a page. That is Blue Period.